Okay, 2020, let's look at 27. This is something I've reviewed a ton of times with you. I just don't want it to happen on next Friday. All right, it happened to some of you on the review quiz. I'm just emphasizing and emphasizing the point is when you do a volume question. Well, how do you know this is volume? Well, let's talk about that real quick. Cubic feet, right? Cubic feet, it's gotta be a volume question. When you, I don't care if it's in the multiple choice section, guys, or in parts two through four. If you're gonna do a volume question, you better make sure all those darn units are the same before, before you find the volume. All right, I don't want you to see you getting a point or two off or getting the whole multiple choice question wrong because you didn't look carefully enough at the units. Before you find the volume of an object, make sure all the units are the same. And that's what happens here. We do volume of a rectangular prism and all of a sudden I see eight times three times one and then you're on your way. But the one wasn't in feet, all right? It was in inches, read it carefully. So before I do anything, I need to convert that one inch into feet. Don't do it. Oh, somebody asked me in my first period class, can I just change everything to inches and then convert it into feet? No, you can't because you're about to use this conversion right now, that 12 inches equals one foot. That is not the same for cubic inches and cubic. That is incorrect. That's an incorrect conversion. That's why I need you to do it at the beginning. I got one inch. How many feet? Is that? That's the only conversion you're responsible for. Any other conversion will either be A in your on your reference sheet or B as part of the problem. Feet and inches are the ones you have to remember. And what are we getting? One twelfth when I leave it as a fraction. One inch is one twelfth of a foot. Now I'll use that in my volume calculation. Whoa, whoa, relax, relax. So we get the volume of this tabletop, two cubic feet. All right, now tell me how much it weighs. I don't know if anybody noticed, and it's not needed in this problem, but 43 represents the density. Why? Pounds, mass, cubic feet, volume, mass over volume, that's density. So this is a density problem. I don't need, you don't need to make it into a density. If you already know to multiply two and 43, go ahead. So 43 for the density, what's the mass when the volume's two? And then quickly we're getting a mass of 86 pounds. There we go. So just another darn reminder for next Friday, make sure the units are all the same on a volume problem, no matter where it's located, part one or parts two through four. All right, next. Number 28. Before I start this one, let me, I just want to make sure we're all have a good understanding of what I'm about to say. I did this third period too. You may see a problem, multiple problems next Friday that I have never reviewed. That might be a possibility. I hope you guys know that. Don't, I don't want anybody getting mad at me saying he never reviewed this. I've had three weeks to review 10 months. That's impossible. Okay. You review as much as possible by doing as many problems and as many exams as possible. Right? So just a heads up there. The review packet is great. Go back, make sure you look at the review packet once or twice before next Friday, just so you can remind yourself of the common questions. Here's something we haven't talked about. How to find the lengths of tangents and secants. I'm hoping you guys know how to find angle A. We have reviewed that, but we have not reviewed how to find the lengths of tangents and secants. And that is a phrase I had you guys remember whole times X. I'll take exterior, I'll, external equals whole times external.
This is for tangents and secants only. Chords are a different fact, all right, which probably I won't repeat. Chords are a different fact to find the lengths of chords. This is only for tangents and secants. So let's go whole secant is 12 and a half. And here's the only trap you may fall into, right, is external, not 4.5. That's inside. I want the outside part. So everyone does a quick subtraction of 12 and a half and four and a half and finds the external part is eight. So whole times external. And then what do we know about the tangent over here? The whole thing is on the outside, so we call it the same thing. We use the same value. Just a reminder to you guys. I know you're not there yet because you have so many different exams to prepare for, and I respect that. But once it comes time and you get into beast mode for reviewing for our regents, and let's say you're not at one of my review sessions and I'm just not there, you're on your own or maybe working with friends, just a reminder. I know this is AB, but you guys have all of the same stuff. Under previous regents exams, you guys have that file the very end, at the bottom, cold hard fact sheet, right? That's your reference sheet on steroids. That's where you can find anything you want, including ah, right on it. Look at that, including all your circle facts, all right? So that's where you can find them all, all right? It's on that cold hard fact sheet. Questions with that one? I got one more to do with you, something I haven't, we haven't even sniffed. Here you go, number 30. Two parts to this problem, two parts to review. First part is a vocabulary, medians. You have three medians in this diagram. So let's review. A median starts at a vertice and goes where? Midpoint. midpoint of the opposite side, correct. So that tells me F, E, and D are all midpoints of those sides of the triangle. F is where I'm looking right now. If F's a midpoint of X, Z, I can find, take half of it, and now know that XF is 7.5 to get start getting to the perimeter. So that's the first step is knowing what remembering what a median is. Second step or second part is hey, all these medians intersect at point C. We got a name for point C. We got a name. Anybody remember that point where all three medians intersect? Doyle. Centroid. Yes, there you go, centroid. Now I'm very happy and proud of Doyle that he remembered it, but that's not gonna help you. What's gonna help you is what's so great about it, right? Good that you remember the name, centroid. Now I gotta take it a step further and say, all right, what was so special about it? Haley? It's in a ratio. It splits the median. Perfect. It splits the median up into a ratio of two to one. So one piece of the median is double the other. So I have CE is five. That tells me XC has got to be double that 10. And how do I always know which one's the bigger piece other than because it looks like it? The bigger piece is always from the vertice to the centroid. All right. The bigger piece is always from the vertice to the centroid. So it looks like we have only one piece left to find the perimeter, which is FC. And we're going to get to FC by knowing the whole median YF is 21. So we can do guess and check if you want. You can say, all right, what number double itself adds up to 21? 
All right, I need two numbers. One's double the other one that adds up to 21. So you can guess and check, or we can do this algebraically. Call FCX, double it. CY is 2X, and they add up to 21. Or guess and check. So X equals 7. So FC7. And now we can add them up. So I just want to, we haven't reviewed centroids at all or medians. All right, all good. I don't care what you work on now, but it's got to be on a Regents exam. You can go back. Here are the ones I'm suggesting from this part two through four. Here are the ones I'm suggesting you look at. The ones that you should know how to do. But if you want to go back, work on the part ones. I got compasses and straight edges on the back table. If you guys want to start working uh, constructions. I, I think we found out that Cami does have a compass. If you want to do them on Cami, you can do it. I guess it does have a compass function on there. Uh, you're working on something. You want to go somewhere else and work with other people. That's fine with me, too. You just got to be working on an exam. That's it. I don't care which one or what problems.